Okay, so where I left off on my stage, I have four frames, right? I don't need the white background, I can delete that. So think of this as, as still photos on a film strip. This is what we'll play for our animation. Starts there, then here, then here, then here. And because of the zoom, you don't even notice that the clouds are moving, the, the stars are moving. But once I stop the zoom, each of those little animated procedures will, will help. Okay. So at this point, I have to set up my next frame and I'm five stops in. At five stops, I think I'm gonna go ahead and one, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna crop my whole image to there. Because I don't know that I need to zoom in more and I'm kind of sick of all the zooming, right? So this will help me focus more on the actual eating. So I zoomed to the point where he opened his mouth and really reaches forward. And now I get to just stay on this zoom and that's good. So because I'm staying on this zoom, I can just go ahead and go to the image size and make it eight by eight inches. And it forces everything up. And now I don't need to do the whole transform thing. I just stay at this zoom. But at least I got to show you how a zoom works. Okay, so now, how do I um, make my creature actually grab some of this coral? So I'm gonna start with the creature and I'm gonna move it above the coral, right? And then I'm going to erase away the parts of my creature that I want to keep behind the coral. So basically the feet. And instead of erasing them completely, right? What I can do is duplicate them onto a new layer that I move behind the coral, and then I can erase them completely. So I get that set. And now, now it looks like my creature is grabbing onto the coral. Right? Because of the different assets, the mouth that's down here, the coral that's in between, Oh, let's see, what else did I lose? Oh, I have to, yeah. I have to delete a little bit more of this. Let's overlap with my creature. There we go. All right. So now, let's see, I think I want to move the coral a little bit. And this time I am going to, instead of just warping it, I am going to puppet warp it so I can control that. because he's gonna shake it in the next few frames. It's gonna be like tough to bite through. So I'm just gonna move it a little bit at first. Right. So just like that. And now I can pose my creature a little differently using Puppet Warp. Keep hitting Command-T, I don't need it. I just need Edit Puppet Warp. And mostly I'm just gonna show my creature kind of struggling. Its feet are planted, but I'm gonna show it kind of he heaving with its chest. And reaching out with its head maybe even like tucking in its tailbone a little bit. Just like that. All 
All right. Now I got to play with those other aspects like the overlay layer and the opacity of it. So the coloring keeps changing a little bit. And the mist, reflections in the water, and the cloud stretching a little bit, and the star is just turning a tiny bit. Okay, now hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A, Command C, Move to my stage, Command V, paste it in. So that's my final kind of zoom in, and you can see he has now grabbed it. Boom. All right, save that, move back. Um, deselect, delete. I'm going to keep this same creature. Instead of duplicating it, I'm just going to keep puppet warping with it because I've got it in the position I want. So first I'll mess with the, the overlay. And then I will mess with the atmosphere and then puppet warp the creature. And his bottom jaw is going to stay fixed. But he's going to keep heaving and kind of gnawing at it. And I'll move his tail a little bit. And I guess I can move his lower jaw a little bit. So once you kind of get used to your aspects, you decide how much you need to change. And then I want to shift the coral and puppet warp it again. So it really looks like it's being disturbed. By this bite. All right. Now I can do the last little touches, move the cloud a little bit, rotate the stars a little bit, and then merge it all together, layer, merge visible, hold down option, and then select all, and then copy, command C, and then command V, paste it in. Okay, so now I am nicely on to basically my third frame. And that's a good place to, to get to today where I've created the animation frames to fully tell the first three panels of my animation. And maybe I'll just add one more so it really looks like he's eating. So I'll deselect from my assets, delete that layer, and I puppet warp the creature. Move the mouth. Don't forget your Command T transform tools. Actually, I want to move the creature down more onto it. So just lock it where I need to and really get yeah the head down onto it and get the mouth in there.
and then play with some of the other aspects. The reflection underneath, the cloud behind, and the rotation of the stars. I think that cloud movement was too big. I have to remember to keep these really small. Any really big jump will draw attention away. These are just background features. Right now, hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, select it all, that combined layer, Command C to copy, Command B to paste. All right, so now I've got a nice seven frames to tell these three frames and it includes a zoom. So now I'm going to show you an animation test. I'm going to save everything first. I'm going to save my stage and save my assets. Make sure when you save your assets, you still have all of them, right? That's why we hold down option when we say merge visible so we don't lose all of these individual layers. Now on my stage, this is how we animate. We go to window and we find timeline. Click on timeline. You'll see a little button in the timeline that says create frame animation. I'm gonna do that, create frame animation. Then you have a little window options in the upper right and I'm going to say make frames from layers. And if I make frames from layers, Right now they're at zero seconds. It's set to play through once. I want it to be more than zero seconds. My default is 0.3 seconds, which is a little bit faster than three frames per second. So use select them all with shift and I type in 0.3. And then instead of playing through once, I'm gonna say play through forever. And then I hit play. And this will be my animation test. And I can, this way I can look at different aspects. I, look, I can look at just the clouds moving behind the mountain, you know, how subtle that is. Or the stars moving on the sky. I can obviously look at my creature leaning forward and grabbing this coral. So far, so good. And really these first three frames, it's all about just introducing these aspects, right? Once it eats this coral, then it's the creature is now gonna to start to transform. Now here's the, the kicker. I call it an animation test because all this does is program the eyeball next to your layers. That's all the timeline does. And we can do a lot of cool things with it, but not until we're finished with all our frames. So while we're still building frames, I now have to delete all of the timeline frames, right? But I don't use delete. If I hit the delete button, it will delete all my layers. So instead, I select all the timeline frames with shift and I drag them down to the internal trash can. And then I can turn off the timeline so I'm not tempted to test it again until I've built my next set. Right? But I know my timing's about right. I know it took seven frames to get this far. Maybe I'll take about seven frames to get to my next end, or maybe even fewer. Right? So I'm going to save it, and I know I'm on the right track. It's a good idea to do an animation test after you've animated what you think is the first three keyframes just to see if you're moving way too fast or way too slow right or if it's just not coming across and it's not the easiest kind of animation to control and you can get a sense of it just by playing through with the eyeball what's happening and this is the kind of thing I can play with when I'm done with all my frames I can play them in different orders right Kind of like a DJ, I can scratch the record. 